jump right in. I don't know where this accent's coming from, but hey guys, what's up? And welcome back to another Co's Coffee Ketchup. Today we're gonna to be talking about getting enough sleep. And this is a topic of severe importance because not only is it something that I myself truly do need to work on, but it's something that in doing research recently into sleep, I did not realize how much this actually affects our everyday life. It is actually one in every three either American people or just people in general, like adults, do not get an adequate amount of sleep. And not only that, when we don't get an adequate amount of sleep, not only are we triggering things like depression, anxiety, hopelessness, feeling just like crazy or foggy during the day, we are, you know, in what's that word I'm looking for? Inhibiting, we are in bit. I can't think of the words, so we're just gonna call it, uh, we're not able to perform at our peak if we're people that like to work out or even just to be a little bit more active during the day. All in all, it's just, it's not a good thing. Not to mention it's also been proven to take years off of our life. So if you're someone that needs to figure out just how to get better sleep, then you came to the right place. I hope you guys have your morning coffee and you're ready to chat and hang out. So first things first, how much sleep do we actually need? This is one of those questions that I'm really iffy about because I feel like a lot of the times we're just told information and I'm sure it comes from like a good place, don't get me wrong, like I did not do any scientific studies on this so I could tell you my opinion but it wouldn't be backed by science. And of course we wanna go by the people backed by science so the ones that have done the tests say that if you're a teenager and you're between the ages of 13 and 18 years old, that you need about eight to 10 hours every 24 hours. If you're an adult, and that means uh, between the ages of 18 and 60 years old, that we need seven or more hours per night. So here's my problem with that. I think that it's kind of like, you guys know how the food pyramid recently changed or like what they say that we need to eat on a daily basis. Like they, I wanna say shoved it down our throats for so long and now they're like, oops, we're wrong. And that is one of the things that I feel like I'm always really iffy about when I go by statistics. Because even though those statistics might be scientifically backed, those aren't necessarily the situation for everybody. So here's my opinion. How much sleep do you really need? Listen to your body. And that is not an easy thing to do. I think it's so much easier for us to listen to a statistic. Bleh, statistic. Um, recently got my teeth cleaned and it's feeling like literally yesterday it's feeling all kinds of weird though because I feel like I have like a low-key lisp going on but anyway I'm rambling I think that we as humans uh, we tend to fall back on what's easiest and when we're told like oh just get this amount of sleep we just assume like oh that must be right and we stop listening to our bodies we're told what to eat we stop listening to our bodies we are told what to do we stop listening to our intuition and so I think we kind of need to find the balance so I think that eight hours is a really good place to start this can be a really fun thing to do especially if you have a bit of wiggle room now I know that a lot of you guys might need to get up and be somewhere at a specific time in the day and in a way I don't have to be somewhere at a specific time of day but I definitely have a schedule that I need to follow or I'd like to follow in order to keep me productive and make me feel like I'm in work mode and off so I decided that I wanted to start experimenting with my sleep having come home and I'm trying to get eight hours of sleep all week this week to see if it makes a big difference in terms of feeling foggy in terms of being productive and the biggest one for me is in terms of feeling less anxious like in terms of just being able to get things done without freaking out so much about getting them done so sleep I think is the first place to start because when you think about it that's when we recoup when we sleep we take all of the stuff that happens throughout the day and we almost put it in like a file folder in our brains and we organize it all and we replenish our bodies our bodies heal our bodies get to rest our muscles if you work out they get to replenish themselves it's so 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 important and it's become like a big I guess focus of mine lately because I was so quick and easy, especially as a teenager too, to just be like, oh, whatever, sleep. Like, I'll sleep when I'm dead. And I feel like that's such a mentality that we're hearing nowadays, down to the fact that we almost wear it like a badge of honor. Like, oh, I didn't sleep last night. Like, oh, I only sleep like three hours a night because I'm so busy. And like, we use that as a basis to show how busy we are or how much we have things to be doing and how productive we are. And that's just not the case at all. If anything, I think 
the people that sleep the most are the most impressive because I'm always like, the fact that you can get all that done and get eight hours of sleep, you're a hero. Basically what I'm getting at here is use yourself as an experiment and if you wanna do this experiment with me for the next week, try and get eight hours of sleep. Find out when you need to wake up, count back eight hours, then a half hour because it usually takes about that long to like really rest into bed and fall asleep, you know? I always like to give myself that little half hour time and for those of you guys that have iPhones, I actually recently showed this to Arthur, but if you go into your clock and you hit the bedtime app, you can put how long you need sleep for. So I put eight hours and 25 minutes because like I said, the 25 minutes to fall asleep and it will wake you up. This is another thing with like a slow, nice alarm. Like I picked the bird song and it just like, I wake up every morning to just like birds slowly getting louder and louder. And that is like such a natural, nice way for me to wake up. And even though I'm not at the point yet, my goal is to get to this point where I don't need an alarm. This alarm, because it's slow rising, it's not so abrupt and I don't wake up in such a panic or like, ah, that was like really intrusive. So the other thing you can do with the bedtime app too is you can get it to remind you when to go to bed because if you think about it, we have alarms to wake us up but we don't have alarms that tell us when it's time to go to bed and so oftentimes, we don't realize we're going into the late night hours, like one o'clock in the morning, knowing we have to get up at like six or seven, and then we're just automatically setting ourselves up for failure. And then the next night we're like, okay, we'll go to bed early. And then all of a sudden it's one, all of a sudden it's two, and you're up again. And then those hours start to rack up. If you were to just miss like an hour of sleep every single day, if you add that up, that's seven hours of sleep in a week. That's one whole night. After, you know, seven weeks in a row, you're missing one whole week of sleep. That's like craziness. We can't be doing that to our bodies because we're just literally leeching ourselves of energy and energy as we know it is life. I love how I'm saying all of this as a we drink our morning coffees. How did you sleep last night, by the way? Leave a comment down below. So in terms of my favorite tips when it comes to actually getting a good amount of sleep, the first one is to not be on technology for like an hour before you go to bed. And that is the hardest tip that I have and that's why I'm saying it first because it's also the most important. Now, I do have glasses that block the blue light from coming through from screens, so that definitely helps with my eyes at the end of the night from being strained and tired. But even just in general, even if you do have glasses like that, that blue light is still telling your brain that it's time to stay awake. We, like, a couple hundred years ago, weren't surrounded by so much technology and so much artificial light, and our bodies are almost like pre-accustomed to knowing the sun and the moon. And when there's sunlight, we know it's time to be awake. When we are under moonlight or darkness, we know it's time to sleep. But screens from computers, even from your phone, like your phone might not seem like a big screen, but that's big enough that in the nighttime it's flashing on your face and it's telling your brain that there's still light around, we need to stay awake. So it's completely messing up our internal like clocks. So the first thing and foremost, try and get off even just a half an hour before bed to just let your body, let your brain kind of time out and start to realize that it's time to like wind down and go to bed. My other tips would include to just avoid food and to avoid like alcohol, avoid anything like that right before bed in particular. And that's another hard one because I feel like alcohol is easy unless you're like it's the weekend and whatever but I feel like when it comes to eating I'm like I used to be such a late night snacker but I'm still like a late night fiend like right around like 30 40 minutes before bed I'm always like ooh, I could go for like a cookie right now or like ooh, I want potato chips and to avoid that is really hard but a lot of the times we're not actually hungry we're just looking for another little burst of energy to keep going because most of the times we're on our screens and our body still thinks it's day um don't quote me on that but that's what i like to believe or at least what conclusion I've come to. So, and then my third big tip would be to turn off distractions. Like even while you're sleeping, you might not notice it, but having your phone up while you're sleeping, if that light bounces off the walls throughout the night, you don't necessarily see it because you're sleeping, but it actually does mess with the kind of quality sleep you're getting. That includes also leaving music on all night, leaving your TV on all night. I used to be that person that couldn't sleep without a TV on. Like I'd leave it on all night throughout the morning hours and then I'd wonder why I'd go to school and be so tired. Now I don't have a TV in my room, but I do have computers and I do have my Google too and I use my Google to play rain sounds when I fall asleep, but I either play it really, really low or I put it on a timer and get it to turn off halfway through the night 
And last but not least, um, in terms of distractions, the other thing that that bedtime thing does is it turns off notifications. So you stop getting your text messages, you stop getting any kind of like um, DMs, any kind of pop-ups or anything on your phone when you're going to sleep. And I think that that's also really important to stay off technology. So it does that for me an hour before I go to bed. And if there's anything that's like, you know, super important, they'll either be able to call through. I don't know if calls can go through. To be honest, not that many people call me, I get more texts. Um, but if it's like urgent, I think they can call through. But otherwise, most people can wait till the morning to get your text back, you know? That doesn't even spin into the fact that I believe in a whole spiritual side of sleep when it comes to like dreaming and the subconscious, which will maybe be a topic for another time. If that's something you even wanna hear, comment down below. And also leave me a comment down below. Do you guys have nighttime routines and how much sleep do you usually get? Aside from that, I will talk to all of you guys tomorrow morning. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.